for inviting us to this lecture at the Architecture Foundation. My name is Jochen Seudern. I'm a design director at the office of Max Tudel in Berlin. And uh, today I want to present you a choice of projects we did in Hamburg, which could be of interest. All projects are about uh, brick architecture and the question how to deal with the long tradition of this material in Hamburg, but also North Germany. So we chose six projects with the same materiality, all in brick, but uh, with quite different locations and urban context. The first one I want to show is located directly at the water side of the Hafen city. It's called Bakenhafen. The second one is located in Spaldingstraße, which is close to the central station and surrounded by a big traffic, big streets. The third project is located um, in the very north of Hamburg. It's called, it's a new quarter called Pergolenviertel. The fourth project uh, is situated in Amsingstraße. And it's like at the city entrance coming from the south, like a city gate. The fifth project um, is situated also in the north. It's close to a downtown station, the so called Alster Terrasse. It's more at the edge of the urban fabric of the outer, outer ring of Hamburg. And the last project I want to show is quite in the historic center. It's close to St. Nikolai Church. It's an extension of the Globus Hall. It's a very interesting site. And now I will start with the first project, which is called Bakenhafen. It was a competition win, a second prize. The first prize is made by Lorenz and Meine Architects. And the decision was to create an ensemble of different apartment buildings with different architects. And all the six buildings, which you can see in the model here, they are linked together by a platform base at the ground floor level. So that's like a platform to the water side. And we, we realized two of those buildings, which you can see here in the side plan. And the location is very special, like a little bit like an island with a double water side setting. So in the north, there is a canal in Backenhafen. And in the south, the River Elbe. And this water site inspired us to shape the buildings like the solid rock in the water, that you see in the picture here, this analogy, like a rocky formation washed out by water, revealing the different layers of the stones. And that was our competition entry an urban figure with an open courtyard to the Elbe, which allows all the apartments fused to the water side. And we develop slightly different facades for each building, all in a very light color in a range of white bricks to reflect the movement of the water and the ships. We try to emphasize the horizontal lines the horizontal structure using gaps, setbacks, strips, and different relief patterns of the brickwork, like showing the sediment of the stones and layers. The building was completed last year, 2021, and we decided not to differ the base using another material. So every building appears like a sculpture itself, but within a family of buildings, it creates a strong ensemble character. So all building parts are in a dialogue somehow, entirely in brick, to give a strong presence as an urban ensemble. We use the same structural elements and details 
in both buildings. For example, the horizontal lines, which continues. So there are no balconies to the street side, only lodges to emphasize the sculptural effect. Balconies are only orientated to the courtyards as a continuation of the horizontal strips to integrate the architecture. And the decision was not to use bricks, like tone in tone, like we did in the competition phase. Instead, we use a contrast of light bricks and very dark brick. So that was the the concept of the first prize and we adapted to this concept. They're very important for the quality of the buildings, for the details, especially of the corners where you can see and feel the thickness of the material, the joints of the materials that are very precise. And uh, as a result of the cost reduction, uh, was low budget housings, we had to use plus in the courtyard instead of brick. A little bit strange here is a transition between the street facade and the, the yard facade. It's a sudden change. But this project shows also that even for low budget housings, a high architectural quality is possible. The floor plans. The new quarter is so called a quarter of generations, means that this residential space contains a diverse community of inhabitants, such as units for families and seniors, assisted living units, which allow elderly residents to remain in their own homes. Apartments are subsidized and rental prices are regulated. You can see a detail of the facade to underline the horizontal structure. The windows, embrasures are deeply inclined. You can see here in shadow. And the window sills are implemented in the prefabricated concrete and integrated also in the horizontal structure without any interruption to underline this very horizontal architecture. And the next project I want to show is in Spaldingstraße. It's also a very interesting site because of its triangular shape and the very dynamic traffic around. So here the design is not affected by the water, but the traffic actually, but it's the same in the same uh, kind of way to deal with the topics of the location. It was a first prize competition, but unfortunately it was not realized. The idea was here to transform this dynamic of the streets into a curved and graduated volume, like washing out the corners. The facade structure is clear and solid to emphasize the structural effect. A little bit like the flat iron building in New York, it's a freestanding high rise. And in the volume, you can see several setbacks to relate to the building heights in the neighborhood, but it also increased the, the, the sculptural effect. So to underline the dynamic of the building shape, we change the brick patterns, partly in the horizontal strips, as you can see here. And the vertical columns, they are divided to visually reduce the massiveness of the building and to give a harmonic proportion. We see the relief of the facade as a modern interpretation of the traditional North German brick architecture. And we use also red colored brick, like in the most unique buildings, unique buildings in Hamburg, 
like Gothic churches and warehouses. On the ground floor, a white cantilever marks the main entrance to the lobby, to the hotel lobby, reminding to uh, historic examples of large European hotels, very representative and open to the public space. The floor plan of the hotel with 250 rooms altogether. The organization is a very rational, efficient floor plan with only one staircase in the center of double helix. The detail of the facade, the relief setback is based on the dimensions of the brick stone. Finally, we made some studies to reduce the cost because of the depth of the facade. The horizontal strips, they are made by prefabricated elements with clinker embedded. And the vertical columns, they are brick, bricked up stone by stone. The window frames, uh, we usually hide behind the brickwork make a very abstract elevation, almost invisible. Next project I want to show is in Pergolenviertel, located in the very north of Hamburg. The master plan was made by E2R architects with, a quiet, with quite strict regulations. The competition was about the very long building and the block in the end of the quarter, we made the first prize, but unfortunately, we're not chosen for the realization. The buildings, they have both a very strong relation to the landscape. They are linked by green pergolas, the light construction, which continues in the building by arcades. But they also define an um, urban space at the center of the quarter, a square, which is here. The challenge, the challenge for us was to create uh, two very unique buildings while respecting the rules of the master plan. We decided to design both buildings similar, but with subtle changes in detail. Both buildings are based on a very quiet, homogeneous rhythm of arcades and windows somehow grounded to the earth. And the trick is that we use perforated bricks, brick walls in the loggia areas to filter the light, but also to continue the proportion and the rhythm of the brick walls. And to super elevate the long building we try to make it visually even longer by emphasizing the horizontals. The, horizon, the horizontal strips, they are plain and the columns, they are perforated. This gives a very strong dynamic. The columns of the buildings are slightly different. The long building has sloping walls and the block has rectangular, rectangular walls. So slight differences. This is a strong, this is, I know there's just, I mean, there's strong coherency between the facade and the floor plans, as you can see here. There's a regular rhythm of the cars. They are the base for a flexible floor plan structure in which all apartment sizes can be represented. Every core serves three apartments. Here's some elevations and sections. We see it as a modern interpretation of a Zeilenbau, a row housing, this very long building. And block typology is organized like an atrium house with a green courtyard inside. And all the apartments, they are accessible by an open gallery in the center, very efficient by two staircases. 
and the, the adjoining rooms like toilets, kitchens, they are, lo are located around the atrium and the circulation area, while the bedrooms and the, the lounges they face to the outside facade. There's also a kindergarten and daycare, which is uh, integrated in the ground floor, built over ground floor. Next project is located in Amsingstraße. It's a site with an existing high-rise building from the 70s, which has to be demolished. It was a winning competition, first prize. We are now in the permit phase. Our proposal was to create an urban ensemble of two different towers. It's like a composition of two different building figures with a gap in between and connected by a pin. The volumes and spaces, they are mediating between the canal to the east and the main road to the west. There's a permeability through the water. This diagram shows the process or the progress of the urban design, how the volumes are adapted to the urban fabric. We're starting from a full block, dividing it in two volumes with an alley and a plin. And then we shifted the volumes of the towers to create an address to the street side, a small plaza in front of the building and the terrace to the canal. And the heights, they are adapting to the neighborhood and to, to integrate um, the ensemble in a higher level of the city surrounding. We are, we are very much interested in the style of Hamburg's brick expressionism which gets its sculptural effect from the finally or finely differentiated relief of the surface without being decorative. It's a, always a powerful play of light and shadow. And here we want to show two examples. On the left side, you can see a building of Paul Bonatz in Düsseldorf, 1924. On the right side, it's a building of Fritz Höger, 1928 in Hanover. Both are designed with triangular columns relating to the Gothic tradition, very vertical structure. And we see the design of, of the facade in Amsingstraße also as a continuation of this tradition. On one hand, the structure is very rational and monumental because of the vertical pilasters. But on the other hand, the vertical and the horizontal structure is like knitted together. And there's a soft pattern of bricks, which reminds even to cloth that breaks the monumentality. And the detail of the brick pattern, that's not, a, not of our invention. It relates to the existing brick expressionist, expressionism, which you find often in, in Hamburg, and we see it as a contemporary interpretation. Both towers, they have different functions. In front, you see the hotel with a folding facade that's more expressive. In the back, there's an office and residential with a more calm and rectangular shape. And the staggering of the building volume opens up a variety of attractive roof terraces with also public functions. And these high quality outdoor spaces are getting more and more important for office staff and hotel guests, as well as for residents. This gives also an active contribution to the vitality of the city. That's a new image made after the competition, a view from the canal. The pattern of the brick was a little bit too expensive, but we could keep the folding facade at least.
Here you can see a typical floor plan of the high rise. Also the program changed after the competition from hotel to office, but it's a really robust structure of the floor plan. So the functions can differ. Then our next location is in Alster Terrasse. It's uh, near to the water line to the Außen Alster. The location is at the edge of the inner city ring, which is characterized by urban block structures with mostly private courtyards. To the south, the city is very dense and urban, and to the north, the buildings that are getting smaller in scale and more freestanding buildings. It was a competition entry last year, a third prize. Our proposal is to transform this existing typology of block structure into three figures, which creates itself public spaces like alleys and plazas in between. The design process is made by subtracting voids out of a full block to adapt to the urban fabric to different situations around. The idea was to create a very solid and unexciting urban figure without height differences. From east to the west, um, there are two passages through the quarter, alleys, which connect the street side to the park side. There is also a heritage fountain, which we integrated in the courtyard. It's like a, a protected secret garden, a green oasis, a hortus conclusus. The streets are at some points open up, widened up to integrate the existing trees and to respect the distance to the existing heritage buildings. And the main address of the buildings, they are facing to the park side, the so-called Moorweide, close to the station dump tour. And the entrances, they are marked as cutouts of the volumes to underline the sculptural volume. And along the passage, we designed something like an inner boulevard. It's a place for communication, for meetings, co-working and recreation space. It's like a semi-public space, which can be opened up to the green courtyard in summer and can be combined by a canteen. Within the curvature of the buildings, we added some roof gardens, like hanging gardens, you can see here. The facade is like continuing, a little bit like a per pergola structure or cold facade, which is framing the private gardens on the top of the buildings. And the idea of the facade is to, to design a family of three buildings, all in brick, but with slightly differences in detail and color. But the window proportion of all buildings are the same with a typical office grid, two times one meter 35. Only the detail of the columns, like here, you can see here, they are different and the color of the bricks. So one building has a U-shaped um, column profile. And the bricks here are like white or very light gray. And one building has a, a stepped column profile and the gray brick, but the same structure of the facade. And one has a T-shaped profile, 
column with a dark brick. So there you can see also a classic progression in the facade, starting from the base to, and to the shaft and to the attic. And the last floor, the windows are folded to define this classic order with three parts. All the columns, they're asymmetric in detail, which gives a very interesting play with the light and shadow. This is a view from the street side, Alster Terrasse. You can see here that the public space in front of the building are extended by green gardens. That's a view from the park side. We see the buildings as solid blocks, which are perforated by a this filigree, filigree structure of brickwork. The lobby, one of the lobbies designed in exposed concrete. And the inner boulevard, again, you see this made out of wood, wood construction, also all the upper floors, offices. So it's a hybrid construction. Here the ensemble at night, which opens up to the lively courtyard, inviting people to come in, come inside to go to the cafe and restaurants. The ground floor, corresponds to the public space on all sides with gastronomy, gallery, conference room, and co-working areas. It's like the meeting point for informal exchange and the interface to the offices which are above. That's a typical floor plan of the offices. The depth of the building are 17, 18 meters. To combine different scenarios like individual offices and open spaces, the layout of the floor plan is highly efficient and flexible with an optimum of daylight. Now I want to show you the last project, in fact. It's situated in the heart of the historical city called the extension of the Globus Hall. It was a competition last year, the end of last year. The site is very close to the St. Nicolai Memorial, which you can see here in the background. The adjacent site is under construction now, I think Caruso, St. John. And here the challenge was how, how to build on history, how to extend such an existing heritage building, the Globus Hall. And we, we find the existing building can be experienced in the urban space as a freestanding architectural sculpture. And for us, the extension of the building was like to design another a Janus head to accomplish a body with another face, like two sides, two heads. Here in red, you see the new building figure, which we extended. So we decided to shape the new building as a continuation of the existing one, but in a more abstract and modern way. This is a model of the new building. And from the top, you can see the, the characteristic mansard roof of the existing building, which we try to transform into a more rational structure. We are not so much interested in adapting to history or to submit to history. We see history more as a starting point to create something unique. 
the architecture of the new building evolves from the existing building so that both merge into a coherent building figure, a new ensemble, a symbiosis of old and new. With its setbacks, the roof structure reacts differently to the surrounding urban spaces. At the same time, the mansard roof is continued in an abstract form. The structure of the new and old design is based on a classic three-part division, like a base, a middle part, and an attic, which we want to continue. There are very characteristic horizontal stripes, like cornice bands, which we want to continue also in the new building. The window proportions of the heritage buildings are also adopted in the new building. So there's a strong dialogue between both. And the relief facade of the new building in combination with a differentiated cubature also refers to the classic bay and gable structures of the historic neighbor. So there will be a kind of silhouette Here, the elevation to the canal water side. The massive pillar structure of the base dissolves into a filigree rhythmic row, like a curtain wall on the upper floors, which leads to the delicate crowning architecture of the roof structure. So the strong relief of the horizontal cornice strips and pillars are continued in a very coherent way. The elevation to the west, to the alley, like the new head of the building. To underline the new part of the building as something unique we decided to use all materials in red tone color and not to differ the base in the attic. The elevation to the street side. You can see the round arc motifs from the existing building, which we retranslated in form of a bulge. You can see later in the detail. So the entire design of the facade is kept in different shades of red. The plinth and the flop bands are made of reddish colored architectural concrete. The filigree pillars are built in brick masonry, brick by brick, similar to the existing building. That's a view from inside. The red tone of the window and door profiles in metal is based on the same color of the bricks, like tone in tone. And here from the roof terraces, you have a nice view to the Nikolai church, to the canal. The detail of the regular facade with a filigree structure of pillows which are 24 centimeters wide. It's like a curtain wall of brick masonry. And we see it as a new interpretation of a classic window wall facade. The fire flash over because the high rise is solved by a massive balustrade as a prefabricated part with embedded clinker bricks. And the horizontal lines are emphasized by a cantilevered cornice band made of reddish colored artificial stone. The crown refers to the mansard roof with its similar regular rhythm 
of the thin pillars. But the pillars, they are also linked to the structure of the regular floors, that there's a continuation. And here we, we combine two floors optically into one, and the structure dissolves upwards without an ending point. And to crown the building, the base is made of massive archaic pillars. They're also made of reddish colored artificial stone. And you see the round arc motif from the existing building is retranslated in this uh, form of a bulge. You can see it in the shadow. The cross section, the ground floor, a generous space opened up to the canal with a restaurant and a gallery. The upper floors, all office spaces, the longitudinal section, all slabs are barrier free connected. And the floor plans. Just to go quickly through, here the ground floor plan with the restaurant, the gallery, and the entrance spaces to the office and the restaurant. First floor with an open space scenario is just um, continued the existing layout of the plan of the offices with one more core. The second floor with individual offices here. The third floor is a combination of both scenarios. It's a very flexible floor plan, of course. And the upper floors with the setbacks, you see how the sculpture is getting more and more dynamic with the setbacks. Different terraces, with different views of the canal. And the attic floor with this very, very, very filigree facade, like a curtain, which connects to the mansard roof. Okay, and this is the end of the presentation. I hope it was a nice journey for you. Thank you very much. Thanks.